Hi, welcome to Offscript. I'm Zach Lewis. And I'm Dr. Draper. Today on the show, we're talking about Bodies, 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 the new A24 horror, uh, the woke, lace, glow stick-based Pete Davidson, Rachel Snow features, actually a lot of fun. We went and saw, we're going to tell you what we thought. Uh, we're also going to talk about 13 Lives, the Ron Howard movie that just came to Amazon Prime. You know, I, I used to think when, when a movie said Ron Howard on the front, it was going to be great stuff, and now I'm not so sure. Uh, but it is about the Thai <laughs> K- Thailand Cave Rescue in 2018. I realize that sounds bad. <laughs> Not two pieces the, of information together. <laughs> not Listen. the Chilean re- rescue, which I kept confusing it with. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, we, we did have to go back and find out if that actually happened or not. But anyway, yes, uh, they, we, the, the movie is out. It's on Amazon Prime. We watched it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about some upcoming trailers, some things that are coming up this Oscar season that you might want to get excited about. But first things first, uh, on to the news. Uh, Ezra Miller seeking treatment for complex mental health issues. My God, the star of Warner Brothers, The Flash, may just be a hero yet. Andy, this came out this morning. Some smoking hot news for off script. What, what do you think about this? I, mean, I think there's a lot going on. Uh, first of all, it's really great that he is seeking help uh, for what what is you know a number of issues he's been having. Um, I do think it's definitely part of uh warner brothers probably stepping in and being like hey this movie's not gonna happen and it's gonna derail your career if we don't like fix this and i I think it's probably a big pr move as well but you know it can be both it can be him getting help and also be a pr move to get some heat off him and hope that this flash movie happens uh next summer so it's a good thing but i think it's definitely a, a pr move if this is your first time tuning into the show or you just have not been up on Ezra Miller news, uh, Ezra Miller has been the subject of controversy over the last you know, handful of months uh, for a number of news stories that have come out about incidents uh, in Hawaii when he was vacationing after filming. Uh, it was an incident at a karaoke bar. He was accused of striking a woman in the, in the head at a private residence. There was something about a family living on his, like farm in vermont or wisconsin i'm I'm not even sure where just just recently uh on august 8th he was charged with felony burglary in vermont uh so ezra miller has had some things going on and warner has been in the interesting position of having the flash movie a 200 million dollar feature already made it's already made and they're just sitting on it they're 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 tidying it up for release next june and they don't know what to do with this big fancy movie because ezra miller's the star and you don't want to have the star of your film be embroiled in controversy and scandal especially if it seems a lot of it may be true so it's really meaningful that ezra miller is coming out now and saying hey you know what i've made some mistakes i'm gonna get better some might say that warner might be back in this whole thing because they really want this movie to do good because they have a ton of money invested so they're probably helping their young star out i think maybe yeah, I, I think, like I said, uh, Warner Brothers is probably definitely stepping in because uh, he's got to sell the movie. He he is the main character. It, you know, we've seen this like with uh, Murder on the not Orient Express, Death on the Nile uh, with Army ha- Hammer. If your star, you know, falls out of favor with the public, it it'll tank your entire movie. So they're trying to get ahead of it. They're trying. They're getting him some help. He's also getting help, uh, which is a great great thing. But we, we see what can happen if if you don't get your star under control. God, I forgot about Army Hammer and Death in the Nile. That was, that was a whole thing. Uh, before I move on, uh, one more bit here. Uh, Miller's actual statement uh, sent to The Hollywood Reporter was this. Uh, Having recently gone through a time of intense crisis, I now understand that I am suffering complex mental health, health issues and have begun ongoing treatment. I want to apologize to everyone that I have alarmed and upset with my past behavior. I'm committed to doing the necessary work to get back to a healthy, safe, and productive stage of my life. Very uh, well-spoken for Ezra Miller. <laughs> It's almost like it's almost like he had a team help and put that together. But, you know, yeah. that's pretty standard fare, I think, for, you know, Hollywood. This isn't that surprising. Uh, yeah, I hope he gets better. I really do. Like, honestly, this, 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 is, this is a big problem, I think, and, and good for him for seeking treatment and getting help. I hope it works out. I hope the Flash comes out. I hope it's a huge hit. Like, I got, I got nothing against, uh, you know, Flash. So hopefully it all works out. Uh, our next story, Saw 10 is coming out, baby. New Saw movie set for Hollywood, Halloween 2023. My God, and we thought they couldn't do it, but here we are. Uh, this is going to be a new Saw movie that is, I, as far as we know, completely independent from that new reboot they already did that Chris Rock produced, starring Samuel Jackson and Chris Rock, called Spiral from the Book of Saw. Uh, this is going to be going, I don't know, back to previous Saw movies. It's from the director of saw six who also edited saw one through five i think he also worked on jigsaw uh a return to form 
for the uh, the the bloody torture porn series. Andy, any hot takes on Saw coming back to theaters? I mean, Saw is a huge property. It made the careers of James Wan and Lee Wannell. Uh, James Wan had, would go on to direct a number of Fast and Furious films, I believe. Uh, I, I feel yeah. wrong, all of us. Said, said, no, I think he did. Horror films. No, he did. He also did Malignant. Uh, yeah. Uh, but it, it's, a, it's a massive property. It's over a billion dollars across nine movies. Uh, so it's of course, going to get another one in the installment. Um, it was interesting to say we were getting a new Saw movie and not necessarily like the continuation of the last iteration spiral from the Book of Saw. So we'll see what kind of direction they go. We don't really know, but uh, I mean, horror is always successful if done right. So, he, Right. Here, here's the thing. Uh, I do have an, an affinity for Saw, a special, a special place in my heart, because when I was growing up, I hadn't seen any of them. And I right around like Saw four or five, you know, I was starting to kind of get wise, wise to them as, as a regular thing every Halloween. And people told me to go back and watch Saw one. It's actually a really good movie. And I was like, yeah, OK, sure. And then when I went back and watched, it, I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, the, the first Saw really is something special. This is an indie feature made on like no budget, like barely pulled together. Uh, and it's great. Saw 2 uniquely follows in a similar vein. Saw 3, Saw 4 start to go off the rails a little bit. By the time we're at where we're at in the series now, like it's clear the audience does not care a whole lot about plot in a Saw movie. They're there for really one thing. And it's the Saw track. We're here for the gore. And, like, we're here for the, the gore. torture. And it's such a good formula for a horror movie every Halloween. Like, give me a couple creative traps. Give me some good special effects, right? Like, we got a Saw movie, baby. If it's Halloween, it must be Saw. And in a weird way, like, I'm glad it's not gone because, of course, it's cheesy and, of course, it's bad. But I'll take a crappy Saw movie over, like, the crappy Child's Play remake any day of the week. Like, I I'll take something at least new in a universe that's mid than, like, a boring remake of something that's better. I, I, I Saw 10 might be good stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm looking it's forward to it. it. It's always it's coming out, uh, you know, it'll come out in October. It'd be a good time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we don't look, you don't always need elevated horror, the movies. All right. Sometimes you need <laughs> down and dirty bloom house kind of stuff. And that's exactly what this is. If, if Halloween kills can come out, then why can't we get saw 10? Uh, one more story this week from the box office bullet train leading a uh, middling weekend while top gun Two continues in its 12th week at the box office. <laughs> Well, three months in theaters 90 days just like tom cruise wanted uh top, top gun maverick continues to do well andy what's going on at the box office well the summer's rack wrapping up it's a quiet weekend there were no real big releases if any uh this week uh so it's mostly holdovers from for the previous week of course bullet train Top Gun Maverick still is in the top five, which is really amazing. I, I just saw something that, that they're finally, I think it has a date for uh, PVOD um, with some extras in it. So it's it's amazing that the legs that movie has had. And then the other small films, uh, Thor, not, not Thor 4, but other films, DC League of Super, Super Pets and uh, Thor Love and Thunder kind of round out the top five so it's the usual trailing off of the summer and we're starting to slow down we got some new things on the, on the horizon but summer movie releases are essentially over yeah this is going to be a thing for the next few weeks here on off script uh, when your friends or family says hey i want to go to a movie what should we see you're going to have very limited options all the studios put all their summer stuff out it's uh, it's come and gone now like all the good stuff came and it went now we're getting into Oscar season. We're getting into the awards stuff, bold cinema, people talking in rooms. Uh, that's, those are some of the things we're going to talk about when we look at trailers in between our reviews this episode. Stick around. But uh, right now, things are a little lean, and that's okay. I think the box office expects that. I think people are having lower projections for these weeks. They're releasing smaller stuff, uh, namely uh, The Fall, which we did not see, but we've seen posters at and chuckled about uh that movie it was projected for a 2.5 million dollar debut limited showings that's kind of the name of the game right now like people are pushing stuff to streaming we're just kind of in, in, a, in a bit of a bit of a lull almost like january the beginning of the year so i don't know it, that, that's all right i'm excited to see you know what's what's coming down the pipe more importantly uh top gun maverick is coming to blu-ray and 4k ultra hd i think in november they said it's actually going to be physical wow. you can get it and watch it at home no idea when it'll be on streaming uh but yeah 
that movie will finally exist <laughs> six <laughs> months like that that's old school that's old school i know that's dude, that is that is tom cruise time like he, he he's running the show and he's like by god when i was a kid this is how movies used to work and popcorn was a nickel uh so you know yeah. if, if he gets his way maybe we'll all be eating cheap um I don't know. That's the box office. And with that, we should probably move on to our first episode. First, first, first film of the episode. Uh, I'm going to be taking the summary on this one. So please excuse a clumsy delivery. The movie is Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. So uh, Bodies, Bodies, Bodies is the story of a young group of uh, pro probably post Gen Z, whatever that is, like really young, like just out of high school, college kids getting together for a hurricane party at one of their rich dad's houses. All these kids are super affluent and they're all on TikTok and they all constantly have their phones out and are plugged into social media and they all get together to drink and do a ton, copious amounts of drugs and listen to music really loud when one of them suggests uh, in the middle of the night, hey, we should play a game called bodies 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 but like werewolf uh, somebody looks for the killer in the room and, and and you know it's a playful game where people get kind of mad but suddenly in the dark the game turns deadly and, and the movie becomes a whodunit of who could have done and make currently continue to be doing the murderers if it's anybody here at all uh, the movie's out from a24 it's a smaller horror feature from a second uh, feature film time director what is her name uh, helena reisen rain uh okay. rain. rain yeah uh and and the movie stars a small cast of up-and-comers uh maria bakalova from borat 2 namely that's where she made her name uh rachel sano a young comedian pete davidson um lee pace from the hobbit movies is in this movie <laughs> the movie is bodies 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 uh, andy what'd you think uh, so some of this works and some of it does i was really looking forward to this uh for a long time it was at a24 uh joint <laughs> and, and we really you know it has, it's this twist on, on gen it's the gen z uh demographic squarely and it's a bunch of frenemies kind of going after each other this mystery of who's who's the killer in, in this bunch um i was a little disappointed uh there are like i said there are some good things i i think it's shot pr well i i think the performances are actually really strong but the the main narrative is just a little weak um it, it doesn't really grab you it's not really scary it's supposed to be a dark comedy i guess and it's not particularly comedic um none of the jokes really land i think it does fail the uh, six laugh test um but there are some good moments and uh you know some positive things to talk about as well Yes, uh, Bodies, 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 I should have said at the open, as a horror comedy for, for anybody who maybe hasn't seen the trailer, doesn't know. Uh, so you're going to get some horror, you're going to get some laughs. Uh, I, I think I was a bit more glowing on it than Andy. Uh, I think it's good, but it's not great. It, it, it doesn't doesn't quite elevate to where I hope a lot of A24 movies do, but it still does something different. And if you aren't too caught up in comparing it to like other films that have come before, you may see this as something of particular original. If, if you're well read in the space and you've seen a lot of films like this, maybe with like, you know, yoke, yoke, woke young folks, uh, you know, committing violence for funsies like, I don't know, Fight Club or Clockwork Orange or more recently Thoroughbreds, uh, maybe even something like Superbad or Booksmart. Then, yeah, you, you may think this is like really something clever and unique. Uh, it does have some redeeming factors that I do want to talk about. There, there are things I liked about this movie, but it just it just falls a hair short. And I, I was kind of expecting more than I should have. I, I kind of knew going in it wasn't going to be a big thing. It's an independent A24 film, you know, like it's not going to be a giant thing. Um, but I don't know. I guess I was hopeful, you know, because I've seen so many unique things happen in the space and in horror comedy. It's, it's a really, really cool space to play in uh, for a filmmaker. And I hope this would do a little more than it does i do want to talk about what works first because i think there's a lot of things that work that people will enjoy when they watch this movie it is not all bad it is good i thought bodies 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 was good i did but let's get into it uh first things first our very limited cast andy there are seven people in this movie yes <laughs> <laughs> that is it uh it's even in the credits list there's not a lot of people uh, we have two boys and five girls. Uh, and like you said, they are all frenemies. They all have a bit of a past. Every one of them seems to have a, a, a parents who are agonizingly rich, who, who are not in the film at all. And they all arrive at uh, one boy's party, Pete Davidson's character specifically. 
who's named David, uh, to have a big hurricane party when the hurricane comes into town. So knowing it's a hurricane party, no cell phone service, lights are going to be out. Nobody's coming to help you, you know, and they see this as like a fun retreat where they can get together and do a ton of drugs and party and, and turn up the music loud. Uh, and this is spoiled when their friend shows up with their new girlfriend who is uh, uniquely sober and doesn't actually do any drugs and then and then that's where you start to get just a little bit of tension in the movie well like well hey you're here and we're not going to be able to have as much fun doing you know all kinds of mind-bending activities because we feel like we have to tiptoe around you and that's just the beginning of a little bit of drama that turns into a deadly game of bodies 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 i, I like everybody in this i think uh, some shine more than others pete davidson's great uh, Rachel Sanau is really great. I've never seen her in anything. She might be Sanat, but I think it's Sanau. Uh, she's really funny. She's she's really funny in this movie. I actually like Lee Pace for what he does in it. He plays this kind of out of place, 40 something guy. Uh, he's, he's one of the girl's boyfriends, and everybody's like, Why'd you bring that guy? Who is that dude? You know, and then that's uh, a fun element. Uh, and, and Maria Bakalova, I want to say, is, is kind of our lead. She plays a like a foreign exchange student who's just tagged along uh, with the sober friend and uh, she's good in some of the emotional parts but i i do think she did not do a great job of emoting being horrifically frightened uh you know there, there's when you start finding dead bodies of friends at a house at, at night in the dark you don't know who's doing it like that's pretty psychologically twisted and most everybody else seems to hang and if they can't it's because their character is like outlandishly high so i get it like i get it sure yeah okay like i that that fits you but she's supposed to be kind of a bit more focused and i i don't think she quite she, i don't know I, I, I wasn't super convinced but i like her she's pretty good uh also shout out to amanda stenberg who's great uh and, and any thoughts on our very limited cast yeah, so I, th I think one of the things the movie does real well is is create tension and uncomfortable a sense of uncomfortableness between everyone because these aren't like really adults; they're like proto ad adults. And what I mean is, it's just like yes. there's a, a lot of like courtesies that you that are just kind of left out. Like um, Sophie and B, our main kind of duo, show up kind of unannounced and everyone's surprised to see them they're like oh no one knew you were coming but she's friends with everyone so no one's gonna tell her to leave either you know and it's like it's weird that she's there because they're you know they're partying pretty hard and she's like oh no i'm sober now um right and then she's also showing up with a new girlfriend which apparently you know it, it, this is kind of like a social circle that has dated each other all so that's also weird too and then there's there's lots of just that kind of situation where everyone's a little uncomfortable with each other. Everyone's got history, some good, a lot bad, but they're still good enough to be hanging out. That just creates so much, much tension between uh, everyone. And like I said, I think the performances themselves are, are pretty good. It's just that the narrative overall, is not um, super strong? Maria Bakalova, of course, very good from uh, Borat too. She like, like, Zach was saying she doesn't really have a whole lot to do. No, uh, she's not given a lot of lines and she kind of mumbles the lines she has because her character is supposed to be meek and feel out of place. And like, I get that. Like she would feel very out of place with this group of individuals. Um, but yeah, like it just comes off as a weak character. Like, and she doesn't have a lot of opportunities to really shine. There's a couple of like actually good emotional scenes where I think like her, her talent really comes out, but um, yeah, she's not really given a lot of opportunity. And a big part of the reason that is, is because the movie is really dark, uh, not just in tone, visually very dark. The lights are out almost the whole movie. Um, you get a lot of scenes, it, characters kind of stumbling around in the dark, lots of using their phone lights, lots of using glow sticks to see. And that stuff's really clever, actually. It's it's rare that we see a horror movie where people are so connected to technology and it's useless to them because they're like trapped in a situation that's entirely real and, and, and you know that's not gonna help them out a lot. Like they use their phones as flashlights, but they can't call for help. There's a hurricane outside. Clever, simple writing, uh, gets around characters not being able to call for help. Um, I like that. Like I, I I like that these characters are constantly using their phones for light. It feels realistic. It's exactly what young girls would be doing nowadays. 
Um, I like that when they go out in the rain, like their mascara's running down their face and their makeup's all messed up and their hair's disheveled. Like over the course of the film, these girls just become more and more like craven in appearance because <laughs> they're just like trying to figure out what the hell's going on in this house, which is great. And and I like the the, the who done it mystery of the plot. Like it, it kept me interested. I didn't exactly know where it was going. There's a couple of uh, you know, uh, lame ducks that that make appearances that you feel like, yeah, that may not work out, and it may, or, you know, might actually. Uh, yeah, I, I I thought the look of this movie was smart, and I didn't mind the kind of overall plot too much. Some of the beat for beat stuff I think is weak, and that's really just in dialogue and scripting. Characters kind of they say things to each other that doesn't make a lot of sense when you're in a room full of people getting murdered. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I, I, I think that kind of. Stuff. Yeah, and I think that that's where you kind of have to choose your tone. Like, are you going really lean into the realism? Is it going to be more like comedic and, and a caricature? And this, it's a little all o- over the place. Um, I did want to mention, I, I really like how it's shot in that. So much, so, like the power goes out because, of course, it's a dark and stormy night. Um, and so a lot of the movie is shot in the in the dark or with people using flashlights or their cell phones and so th- that gives a really kind of neat effect because you can never really see everything or everyone when they're in a room and then several of them also have uh these glow sticks they're wearing or like around their neck or, or around the uh their arms and so like that gives a really interesting visual dynamic and it also kind of helps you keep people apart because only a couple of people are, are wearing them yeah, uh, names of your characters will get lost in the script. You won't remember many people's names, but you you will remember the silhouettes. Everybody looks very visually distinct, which is helpful because, you know, you've got five girls who are all crying crying about their phones for a movie, and you're like, well, I can't keep up with who's who here. They all seem really thin. So having characters who stand out visually helps a lot. And, and having them have interesting backstories, I think, is important, too. Some of them do. Some of them don't. Uh, it becomes apparent as you're watching the movie that, like, they're all coming from just copious amounts of wealth (laughs) i don't have any any real idea for boundaries or consequences uh so as they're running around in this house and bad things continue to happen um they they have reactions that seem out of place and i think that pulls your audience out of the film like it it it, you just kind of you know forget that you're supposed to be watching something that's very serious uh fortunately it does create space for comedy uh you get some really funny moments where davidson or rachel Snow like will just crack off a line like in the in the middle of a dark situation that like nobody laughs at in the film there's no diegetic laughter but is funny to us because of the absurdity of the situation um this is also a little weighed down by a script that's very bent on being uh, what people would refer to as like woke nowadays, whatever, whatever that word means uh, anymore. Uh, it's it's, well, it's the poster says on it, this is not a safe space. This is this is supposed to people people talk about characters being toxic or triggered, uh, and that stuff's like fine because I think it fits the, the the generation. But it it there's a couple scenes where you're just like, oh my god, I don't care. <laughs> well, and and I I think it's again it's it's played for laughs and and they just don't really hit there's a a sequence where they literally do a tiktok dance because we've gotten to that place where everyone knows what that (laughs) that means to do um and Uh like the the music they're using is like already outdated so it's like when this yeah so when this movie is playing is playing now it's already outdated in a sense and it's only going to get more outdated so i kind of feel this is very much an in the moment film and like it's not really going to age super well yeah, and I think that like is a perfect place to 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 make our make our exit on our bodies bodies review bodies 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 review because this movie is all about being in the moment, like especially for our characters who are vapid <laughs> and like so you know just just constantly nar- narcissistic. Uh, all of them have personality complexes and they're constantly looking at themselves over everybody else. Uh, it creates a setting for a unique who done it, but ultimately, yeah, it's probably not going to age very well because it's very modern. Uh, and also, uh, you know, is 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 pretty harmless going forward. I don't have any plans to rewatch Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. I don't think it's not something I'm like going to rush out and buy the Blu-ray for. Um, I I think it's good. If I saw this on TV, I'd probably watch it. Like, uh, yeah, I I I don't dislike this movie. I I think it's good. It's just not, you know, it's not it's not anything to write home about. It's just a solid solid feature. And that's and that's a fine place for a new director to step into the space and do something different. I like the people in it. I like the lighting and the way it's shot. Um, and I don't know. That's 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 bodies, bodies, bodies. I also like the soundtrack. 
quick mention. Uh, there's a great playlist on Spotify. There's some good stuff. Uh, you should go check out if you like the sound of bodies, bodies, bodies. Uh, Andy, any other thoughts before recommendations? Um, no, I'm uh, I'm ready. Andy, would you recommend bodies, bodies, bodies? Uh, for me, I would say save it for streaming. Um, it 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 is short. It's a nice little self contained a bottle film essentially. Uh, horror movie that's it's very progressive and it's uh it's cast and it's representation um there are some good there are a lot of good performances there's good cinematography the the story and the mystery are just a little weak and didn't really didn't grab me the dark comedy element of it didn't really grab me either i also have to remember like i'm near this is aimed at gen z and i'm an elder m millennial so um you know may, maybe younger folk will maybe relate to it a little bit more uh but i i didn't as much so i again i would say save it for streaming it was fine uh i'm kind of in the same boat i, I liked it more than andy did i think uh but yeah you don't you don't gotta run out and see this this is not the hot new a24 feature this is not like you know it's cer certainly not like everything everywhere all at once it's not like you're gonna rush out and tell your friends oh my god you gotta go see bodies 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 it's fine if you're interested if you if you like a24 you like horror you kind of want to see what's going on in this movie go check it out you'll probably enjoy it if not say for streaming yeah you're you're not you're, you nobody's breaking down the door to talk about bodies 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 like i think it's a solid feature i'm interested to see what the director does next I'm, I'll, I'll keep up with the cast and see what they got going on it's bodies 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 baby it's not so bad and with that, we should probably move into our first review of some upcoming trailers and some things that are coming out. Andy, you mind introducing this segment for us? It's time for the trailer park. So first up this week, we got four trailers, four hot features to talk about coming out from August to October. This is stuff you may not have heard about, smaller features, indie joints, stuff that may or may not get nominated for Oscars, hopefully, because a lot of it is, uh, you know, bold cinema, kind of stuff Andy and I like. People standing around talking in dimly lit rooms. That's that's what it's all about, baby. Yeah, that's yeah. the stuff that wins awards. Uh, so let's get into it. Our first film is a movie called Funny Pages. Actually, no, it's not. It's called Breaking, and Andy's going to talk about it, and then I'm going to talk about Funny Pages. Sorry, uh, no my problem. dyslexia got the better, man. Yeah. All right. Uh, Breaking is a new film starring John Boyega, who plays a war veteran. Who uh, we see in the in the trailer, he goes and holds a bank hostage, gets everyone out, and he's he said, I got guns and a bomb, and but he's not there for the money, he's there for the attention, and he's trying to get the attention of kind of government officials, and, and there's some like he is a war veteran. There's either somehow he's been wronged or he's trying to get the attention and trying to get things done, you know, involving the VA. Uh, this is reminds me actually of things like I mean, it's been compared to Dog Day Afternoon, but I think more closely to something like John Q, uh, the movie with Denzel Washington where he holds a like a hospital hostage because he's trying to get cancer treatment for his son or daughter it's a little bit like that it's someone pushed to the edge um, who's been marginalized and ignored and is taking extreme measures to uh, to bring about change uh, the movie also stars uh, Michael K. Williams and I think what might have been his his final role um, this looks good it looks exciting this is not for streaming this is going to theaters um, actually in like a couple of weeks, maybe next week. I actually. think it's showing at a couple of places in town now. I looked it up earlier and was like, "Oh, it looks yeah. like there's showtime." <laughs> maybe it's going to, to streaming soon. Actually, yeah, uh, it's yeah. But I I like the. I mean, it looks exciting. There's a lot of tension, uh, a lot of act, action because you know the the police and SWAT and every everyone else uh, surround the building, and you know he's got hostages inside and he's trying to get things to happen. Um, and I like John Boyega, so uh, yeah, I'm kind of excited about this. What do you think? Yeah, I'm in the same boat. I haven't seen Boyega do anything since like Star Wars. Like, I'm sure he's done other stuff, but like, I hadn't really seen him anywhere. And I, I've seen on Twitter, he's pretty active and in Instagram, uh, usually swinging on Star Wars trolls, which is a valiant effort. And he's been saying that he's got stuff coming up. Like, he, I don't know if he took a break or, or kind of where he's been, but like, I think he's good. I really liked him in Star Wars. I, I wish he'd had more opportunities to do more. Uh, and I think this looks solid. Yeah, like Andy said, it's John Q kind of thing. Dog Day Afternoon. Uh, you got somebody holding up a holding up a bank, and they got a reason. And everybody's gonna find out over the course of the film. I don't think that's bad. Uh, I'm excited to see Michael K. Williams. I don't know. This one might just be a sleeper. Like there might be some good uh, emotional pulp in there. I, we'll, we'll have to see. Our next movie is the one I introduced before Andy talked about breaking, breaking, breaking. It's called Funny Pages. Uh, breaking, breaking, breaking. Bodies, bodies, bodies. One breaking. breaking. Was the, 
funny pages is this movie uh <laughs> that is coming out that's from uh first time director owen klein who's a young alternative comedian uh here's the summary uh because I'm, I'm not sure how best to describe it a bitingly funny coming of age story of a teenage cartoonist who rejects the comforts comforts of his suburban life in a misguided quest for soul uh, it is about a young man who wants to be a comic artist for the funny pages it's what he wants to do and he lives in the 90s and everybody tells him that's a terrible idea i think it's the 90s could be earlier uh the whole movie is super indie uh it's got that mid 90s filter on it like so everything's mega grain and it looks like it was shot yeah. on a vhs tape uh i go for stuff like this like i i know this one's not necessarily produced by a24 or anything but like you never know. Like some some of the best moments in cinema, I find, are like really odd one off features that like you know just kind of come out of nowhere. And for all we know, this one might have some heat. There, there could be something to it. So funny pages caught my eye when we were putting this outline together a few weeks ago, and I thought, why not? We'll throw it on the list. Funny pages. Andy, any hot takes? Um, it looks all right. <laughs> uh, it didn't really grab yeah. grab me, but uh, it could kind of go either either way. It's it's kind of a story we we've seen before misguided youth uh with uh, full of idealism uh has to learn the harshness of reality <laughs> um, with a lot of laughs along the way yeah i i love i any any movie that supports like the kid drawn drawn in his notebook instead of like taking notes in class i think is one i can get behind it's a good underdog story you know what parents are like what do you mean you want to draw comics for a living this is it this is all i want to do it's great uh what's next uh, next is Triangle of Sadness, uh, which I've heard a lot of buzz about in the uh, film festival circuit. Uh, this is a movie by director Ruben Ostlund, who uh, famously directed Force Majeure, a Swedish film, um, which was remade for American audiences very terribly with Will Ferrell. But um, it's kind of a, a, a modern classic. This film, Triangle of Sadness, is about an incredibly wealthy cruise that uh people are on on this uh yacht so it's not like a cruise liner it's but it's it's a yacht and there are is you know the working class crew who works it along with these uber wealthy people uh at some point the there's a, a storm the boat crashes on an, on an island and everyone is you know kind of marooned um and that's kind of wh where the the teaser ends which is probably a great place but i imagine this is going to be about you know what was a very difference in class kind of doesn't matter when you're all equally stranded you know and 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 the uh the people that were you know are more useful <laughs> maybe become more uh th this looks like it'll be good probably uh some dark comedy if you've seen force majeure, majeure it's all about really uncomfortable and funny uh situations uh this stars all a bunch of swedish actors that i, I can't i'm not going to try and pronounce their name and also woody harrelson <laughs> Uh, uh yeah what do you what do you what do you think about this i'm i'm looking forward uh, to this. i don't know a lot about it i'm looking forward to it uh the direction reminds me a lot of like a yorgos lanthimos picture um like director of the lobster or killing of a sacred deer like just really locked down tripod uh, like unwaveringly dark comedy right like starring a bunch of super rich people who are completely out of touch with reality on a boat that is slowly going down <laughs> <laughs> like it sounds like the best parts of titanic and uh god i don't know what else um but i yeah i'm looking forward to it i i it seems it seems like a small feature and it seems like it might definitely be one that like ends on a really odd note and you get to the end you're like oh that was a weird movie but you know i don't know why it's called triangle of sadness i'm intrigued yeah, they, i hope it yeah yeah that's not uh it's yeah it does have weird title doesn't tell you at all uh, Force Majeure, if you're not familiar, uh, is this the film he did in 2014? Is, is about a family that is go skiing and there's this avalanche, and everyone panics, but no one no one is hurt. But in the midst of of the the danger of this avalanche, the father kind of shoves his family aside and like kind of <laughs> runs to save himself. And then the rest of the film is the kind of fallout of the of that action. <laughs> yeah uh the the american remake was called downhill and it came out in 2020 and i didn't see it but yeah it's <laughs> i know i remember andy talked about force majeure like years ago i feel like you 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 were like there's it's this a, movie a, that you should see film. yeah so it's cool to see you know directors we like coming out of the woodwork a little bit uh our last film for this week on trailer park is uh the banshees of inishirin 
Uh, the Banshees of Inisherin is quite the title. Uh, does not sound like a normal film. It's from directed by Martin McDonough, director of In Bruges, and most recently, uh, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, Academy Award nominated feature. Uh, stars Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson as two uh, lifelong friends in Ireland who uh, are seem to be getting along just fine. When one day, son- one of them suddenly and abruptly decides to end their relationship and say, "Don't ever talk to me again, or I'm going to pound you." And the other guy's like, what do you mean? What I do? And that's the movie. It's two adult men who don't even seem to be able to sort out their differences, uh, both in Ireland. That's that's the whole movie. Uh, I'm very interested in this movie. Again, uh, bold cinema, right? Just just old, old people talking in rooms. And that's what's going on here. Martin McDonough has proved time and time again. He's incredibly capable of making something interesting. This obviously feels like a spiritual follow up to In Bruges, which also starred Colin Farrell as Brendan Gleeson as two partners who were having differences <laughs> and they're trying to figure themselves out after a job. Uh, I, I mean, what's not to love, right? Like this, this seems like it's going to be a smash hit. Yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to it as well. Love Brendan Gleeson. Colin Farrell's always great. And, and again, In Bruges is, is a classic uh, kind of dark comedy from that's oh, pretty old now, 2011 or so. Um, is it 2011? I was hoping it was like 2014. It probably is 2011. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, because I, yeah, yeah, you're right. It's early, in, yeah. It's a great film, and so it's nice to see these two. And, and again, it's a you know dramatic comedy, a dramedy. Uh, as much as I hate that <laughs> that word, but it's and it, and it's it's so Irish, like it's the most Irish movie. It's in Ireland. Everyone is in it is Irish, and it's they're out in those, you know, the Irish countryside as well. It's a rural film. Uh, yeah, it's big it, lenses, it, it looks, landscapes. Yeah. It looks like a lot of fun, and I'm I'm excited to see it. Looks like a lot of fun. Uh, speaking of Colin Farrell, uh, we need to talk about our last film of the episode, which he's also featured in. Andy's going to be taking the summer on this one. Andy, please take it away. Thirteen Lives. So this is the story of the rescue of the Thai soccer team, which was trapped in these caves in Thailand. I've said for a couple of weeks. I kept mentioning Chilean soccer team no there were chilean miners who were trapped underground but that was a completely different situation this is a thai soccer team in thailand um this was all over the news a couple years ago uh this group of 13 uh young men on this this team went cave exploring in thailand it started raining the cave filled up with water they got trapped and it's about the country coming coming together the world coming together to save these boys and and the very harrowing escape and wh- what this whole operation was, because it was this massive undertaking to save the, these kids who were on borrowed time uh, to escape. And it's, you know, they were trapped really far in the cave. They, you know, it was very, parts were flooded, parts were not flooded. They, you know, they didn't have any food. So you had government forces working together and uh, the film stars Viggo Mortensen, Colin Farrell and Joel Edgerton as uh, divers who come uh, from elsewhere in the world to to help help with the rescue. And uh, not a lot of people know these kind of can dive these kinds of caves, but they can. Um, the film's directed by Ron Howard shot on location in, or a lot of it is shot on location in Thailand. Um, very claustrophobic feeling there's a lot of shots in caves and people underwater and they they recreated all the those sets um so that that's the the film zach what'd you think uh so i didn't i didn't i didn't really go for this movie i didn't really like 13 <laughs> lives uh it feels a little like a half-baked idea uh it's like it couldn't figure out what it was gonna be uh i feel like when this happened in 2018 ron howard was probably maybe got a big head about it and was like oh my god i could make this movie adaptation It'd be really cinematic and cool and maybe he got involved with what was going on over there got excited somebody somewhere who, who wrote the script for this or something got got really stoked on the idea and then along the way in the production like it felt like they couldn't really find a strong emotional center or like a really good like through plot for the, the the film the story the film is based in and you end up coming out with kind of a a feature that's too long kind of bloated and and ultimately like lacks i don't know a feeling of real like suspense because uh if you're an adult watching this movie and have an amazon prime subscription like you likely do uh to watch 13 lives 
you you already know what happens you we know what happens with the title and cave rescue like so it's weird to watch this movie and feel like i already know what the ending is going to be and it takes two and a half hours to get there like what are you going to show me in there <laughs> it's really incredible there's there's some quality acting there's a few scenes i like but but ultimately like i i can't help but think why didn't ron howard just like make a documentary instead you know and 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 cut right to the quick and get to the people that's actually happened to because this kind of biographical recreation is good, but it's just, I don't know. It's not, it's not, not, not quite up to snuff for the man who made Apollo 13, another movie about people trapped in a place. And like, now we're here 13 lives. Uh, I don't know what happened, you know? Uh, it's so, yeah. Like, yeah. So, so somehow Ron Howard has managed to make a very dramatic and, and kind of death defying situation, incredibly bland. Um, again, yeah. it, I, I think this would have been better as a documentary. Um, the, we just we don't get enough into our characters. There's not anyone one to really latch on to. All our divers are one dimensional. All the uh, the the Thai pe- divers and soccer team, they're all one, like we don't really get to know anyone. Um, it doesn't feel dangerous un- enough. Like and, and it, it is, you know, they're in these tiny caves like their their air tanks are scraping along the, the bottom like. I mean, this must have been such an unbelievably dangerous thing to undertake, and somehow it just it doesn't come across that way. There's not enough fear, not enough danger. Even though we know how how it ends, it's still. I mean, they didn't at that point. They they thought they were going to be find these if they found these boys at all, it was going to be dead. And we don't really get that sense of drama and that that sense of, of urgency. It's just kind of like oh hum, hum oh let's go rescue the kids. We can do it. <laughs> and i don't know how that happened because it's such a dramatic situation it's like how did you how did you blow it so there's a couple of core points that like i think upset the apple cart when it comes to like any any dramatic effect this movie is supposed to have number one you probably already know how it turned out uh all the boys make it out so you're not gonna have any real drama where like the boy the boys are really in trouble this time because we all already know they all make it uh, there are some huge missteps along the way, and those are particularly interesting. Those might be the best moments of the film, uh, outside of trying to actually figure out how to get the boys out of the situation and the setup to explain how they got in here. Uh, and that's something the movie does very well. I'll talk about that in just a second. I think, like, number one, people already know what's going to happen is a problem. And number two, these caves are so tight, right? It's so difficult to move around in these muddy late like a, a completely submerged caves that like divers could not work through that it was an incredible challenge to get in and out of these things it also means there's no room for air there's no room for big water tanks there's no room for error and there's also no room for cameras like and that crazy situation where like it's not particularly compelling to shoot uh in, in fact i was looking at the trivia for this one of the only things uh, divers who were actually there said didn't really work in this movie is the water isn't muddy enough. They're like, we couldn't see anything. And they don't even have that in this movie because you got to be able to see. It's a movie. Yeah. So, like, you got your characters looking around like they're swimming in relatively clear water, swimming through areas where a camera can fit because they had to shoot these things. And, like, suddenly this doesn't look as, as, as much a tight squeeze as it should be, right? Like, this doesn't look quite as harrowing as it needs to because you have to cheat it for the film. So it just kind of comes off lacking, you know, and it's like I, I wish they had, I don't know, figured out a way to make that a little bit right. more and harrowing. Another, another to piggyback off that, another thing that that could have been more dramatic is, you know, their solution was to sedate the the soccer team and to slowly pull, you know, take them through the cave because it's I mean, it was like several miles that they're in in, in this thing and they have to, you know, they're like they'll know that they'll the the kids will panic if they have to actually try and swim. So like their their solution is to sedate them and kind of bind them up and take them through like packages. And, but the thing is they have to sedate them like you would put someone under for surgery. And that's an incredibly dangerous thing to do without all the machines hooked up to constantly monitor, monitor everything like heart rate, breath, like brain activity, all these, you, you know, it, it's really incredible because they they had to be like, well, let's just hope they stay under, and we're gonna give them some extra shots along the way. But if they wake up underwater, they could die and also kill the person that they're with that's trying trying to help them. Um, and again, this wasn't 
it just didn't feel dangerous enough. Didn't feel as kind of unpredictable enough as, as it probably was the real thing. Yeah. Um, the, the movie suffers from like that lack of, of dramatic core. Like and Andy's absolutely right. Like the, the, the parts that should have really big tension just don't quite, don't quite elevate to where they need to. And that's her, that, that that's, that's like additionally unaided by like a, a really long runtime, two and a half hours. Ooh. If you're going to make me watch a movie for two and a half hours, it better be Lord of the Rings. Like it better be good stuff. Cause if you can't <laughs> do it in shorter time, it feels like you didn't have enough to say. I think this movie's hurt by its pacing and something that probably would have helped that was either tighter editing, uh, a, 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 a plot that's more centered on like a central conflict. That's not necessarily the Tylen cave rescue. Uh, and additionally, the idea that maybe this should have been a mini series. Um, and yeah. I talked about that after, after we watched it, like this could have been a three episode limited three, four episodes, series from, yeah. from director Ron Howard on Amazon prime. That they really could have played up, like watch three episodes of this, you know, and instead it doesn't quite get there. I'm reminded of like, uh, the Peter Jackson doc uh, get back when they were like, Oh, it's going to be a movie. And then they announced, Oh, it's going to be a limited series on Disney plus. And then by the time it comes out, it's like 12 hours of content, it wasn't 12 <laughs> hours, but it's like way too much. And it's like, no, 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 no. Like you guys missed the mark here. You know, like we, we live in an attention economy. You got to get to the goods. You got to keep people hooked. 13 lives doesn't do it. It, it just takes too long. It's a little too bloated. Um, Yeah. Yeah, and we, we just, it, it has a couple of side plots involving people outside of the cave, which kind of make it too long. And it is cool that I, I think a lot of it is shot on location in, in, in Thailand, um, you know, near where, where that cave was. But it's, yeah, it's just, it's, it's way too long. It's so they, long. Yeah, I was with they, they it did. for like the first 45 minutes, but then I couldn't yeah yeah it's got a fine start like it, it it gets going i like the way it introduces our characters i wish it dug in on them more um you know you don't really get to know vigo mortensen's diver you don't really get to know colin farrell's diver he's got some problems at home with the son but you never really investigate that stuff and that's a shame like honestly i i obviously the movie should have been about somebody i think somebody's struggle and not just like the general struggle of five thousand volunteers trying to figure out how to get 13 people out of a cave because that's too overreaching it's too big you know like even the movie 300 had to be about uh one character and then you kind of build the set around them and like 13 lives doesn't really go for that like it doesn't make it about any one per person in particular it makes it about this kind of movement and that's why i think it would have probably worked better as a doc like make this a documentary and give us the real people like give yeah, me interviews exactly. with the it actual people who dived it and photos of the cave and how awful it looked like that would have been a much better spend of resources than like a dramatic retelling of something that happened so recently yeah exactly interviewing the real divers who who were there and survived that's the thing this wasn't without loss of life um from some of the people who were trying to do uh, the rescue, but yeah, interviewing the, the, the real divers interviewing the, cause they were, they were in there for over a week before they were found. It, like they didn't have any food for yeah over, over a week, you know? So like interviewing the people involved, the kids involved that, that like that would have been incredible. Uh, yeah. Th th yeah. There's potential here for an incredible documentary and a subpar movie. <laughs> Yeah, like there are amateur cave divers on YouTube who put out like content that's more harrowing and captivating than this. Like this is like dramatic retelling of something that was already plenty dramatic, like ultimately just falls a little flat and doesn't actually like meet, I think, like the drama that came from the real situation. Like that that's that's that was really a thing. I mean, that's a whole thing. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, and that's a bummer. I, I do like the people in it. Colin Farrell is pretty good Vigo Mortensen's good Vigo, Vigo Mort I, I think Vigo Mortensen is like he's like low-key method actor right like he's I think he gets really into roles uh IMDB said he helped like a lot with advice on this movie he was the one that suggested to Ron Howard that they actually dive it for real like uh, well like the, the the actors actually like get scuba certified and dive it so like you're not just using stunt doubles like um, yeah. which apparently fun fact Colin Farrell got so claustrophobic filming this movie that he was like I don't think I'm ever gonna do water <laughs> get the, I'm never like gonna water pool, pool again. again yeah we're not gonna see Colin Farrell in Avatar 5 I think is what I'm hearing uh, which is a bummer but uh, you know Joel Edgerton's fine like him as, as Dr. Harris as an anesthetist who's, who's given an impossible task um, 
you know, it's, that stuff's good. Um, I just, it's, it's weird that like, like I said at the show open, like I used to feel like a Ron Howard movie, a movie had Ron Howard's name on it. It meant something. And watching this one, I'm just like, it doesn't. This, this like, uh, made by, he's gone yeah. full Zemeckis. God. <laughs> he's gone, <laughs> yeah. Full, full Rob Zemeckis. My God, off the deep end. He's making welcome to Marwin, you know? Um, so I don't know. Uh, yeah, and it's weird I, coming from the guy who made Apollo 13, like a movie that's like great about like people stranded in a place and nobody knows how to help them, you know. Um, and now we got this like 13 lives, terrible poster. Uh, anyway, we should get to recommendations. Uh, Andy, any other thoughts? No, I think I'm ready. Would you recommend 13 lives? Skip it. <laughs> no, <laughs> this is what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say hard, hard pass. Um, you're you'd do better just to read read about the story or you know go look up news clips and, and interviews it just it has it doesn't have the drama that it should have for something that was so dangerous such an incredible undertaking where you know there there was loss of life where there there was potential huge loss of life uh and where the world kind of came together to help get these these boys out and Somehow Ron Howard has managed to make that really bland and uninteresting in an overly long movie. So, um, you know, maybe they'll make another one. Maybe they'll like if if they ever do a full documentary of this, like that's what I would really like to see. Pass. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. I, I think 13 Lives is aimed at like the 55 and up crowd. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't think this is made for anybody like who who has any real interest in like Ron Howard's next big feature because this doesn't feel like it. It, it feels like it's lacking. I, I'm disappointed. I, I, I like the people in it. I, I think I think it was a valiant production, but ultimately like it lacks a, 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 a creative gooey center that like really i think grounds good cinema just just isn't there so bummed uh hoped for more but 13 lives is fine uh if there was like a 90 minute documentary about it i'd tell you to watch that probably any day over this one um it's too long too bloated doesn't quite get over the finish line and speaking of the finish line that's about it for this week on off script episode 186 under our belts andy or at least almost uh, what are we 200 uh, is on the right on the horizon I, dude it's coming yeah only only 14 precious weeks uh and we'll be there uh andy what are we watching next week uh well first i wanted to talk about uh the the big release there's not a lot of releases the rest of the month uh the big release this week is a film called beast starring idris elba that's gonna be in theaters only that's the one with him and his daughters going on uh, some sort of african safari and everything goes wrong there's lions there's mercenaries that's coming out but that's not what we're gonna be watching for the show we're gonna be actually going back to some uh some oscar films we we missed uh, last year, uh, we're going to be taking a look at Licorice Pizza, which is uh, Paul Thomas Anderson's uh, latest film that's on Amazon Prime, and also Belfast, which was Kenneth Branagh's uh, film, which was nominated for Best Picture, and that's on HBO Max. So we're going to be doing kind of an Oscar throwback and get finally <laughs> watching these two films. Yeah, I'm excited to get down to these. I, I was excited about Licorice Pizza initially, um, just because Paul Thomas Anderson is, you know, make, guy makes hangout movies. And like, I think hangout movies are fun, but uh, a film about a 25 year old dating a 15 year old felt a little weird. And then it came out and people, I don't know, reviews seem to be really mixed. So we didn't end up watching it. It was the middle of Oscar season. Now it's on Prime and it's going to be a slow week. So I think it's going to be Licorice Pizza. And then Belfast. Not didn't have the controversy around it, but kind of the same thing. I just felt like, eh, we we just seen Death on the Nile, which I really didn't like. <laughs> I thought, how, how good could Belfast be? But it's it's available now. We're gonna check it out. Uh, also, I, I, a quick note for next week: we're gonna be doing the show on Wednesday because I gotta get some dental work done on Tuesday, and I'm not sure how laid up I'm gonna be. So, barring any crazy uh, extenuating circumstances, Wednesday is the show. And that's uh, it's going to be off script 187 next Tuesday, next Wednesday. I'm sorry. If you want to keep up with the show next Wednesday, you can follow us on Facebook where we live stream our show every Tuesday or Wednesday. If Zach's having dental work, you can follow us on YouTube where we upload our live streams. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. And we're in all the usual places where you get your audio only podcast. iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, iHeartMedia. Follow us there. You can rate and review. The biggest thing you could do to help us out, actually rating and reviewing might be the biggest thing, but the second biggest thing you could do to help us out uh, is just subscribe. 
Subscribe to Oscar Film Review to get new episodes delivered straight to your phone every Tuesday, unless it's a Wednesday when Zach's getting dental work. And you can also write in the show and we read your correspondence on the air, assuming it's, you know, not profanity laden or spam. Uh, you can write us at mail at OscarFilmReview.com and you can check out our website, OscarFilmReview.com, where we've got interviews, past shows, live streams, all kinds of good stuff. Just hanging out over there, waiting for you to come explore. Come join the show. Movies are expensive. Podcasts are cheap. And come hang out with us over here at off script and uh most importantly thanks for listening god that was a whole spiel but i think i'm at the end of it uh yeah thanks for listening to the show we really appreciate it uh andy any other i think we're good it's time for the dismount it's time for the dismount Let's i think the we're dismount. good <laughs> from all of us at off script the home of bold cinema i'm zach lewis and i'm dr draper thanks for